All right, everybody, what's going on? And welcome to today's edition of Swag Talk. Of course, this is a show where we cover the swag inside and out. I am your tour guide around the swag. See where else coming at you. And we're going to start to uh, recap some of these seasons of, of our swag teams. We're going to do our 12 team uh, swag season recap. I'm going to do like four a show so we can go ahead and knock those out. I was just going to look at, you know, what I thought their record was, what their record ended up, how they looked statistically. Uh, any trends or anything that I thought was interesting with them, and then we'll, you know, we'll make our way through. Uh, today we'll cover uh, Alabama State, Alabama and them, all corner, but then Cookman. Uh, Wednesday we'll cover uh, Florida and them, Grambling, Jackson, and Auckland Valley, and then Sunday we'll cover uh, Prairie View Southern, Texas Southern, and Pine Bluff. Also Wednesday we have our uh, Celebration Bowl preview. And Sunday is our Celebration Bowl recap, so, you know, we got four shows. Today we're also going to talk a little swag basketball and uh, some FBS, new, FBS move-up news uh, info um, that could potentially affect the swag in the future. Um, before we get started, as usual, you can check out the socials there on the screen down below. Facebook is Swag Talk, Instagram, Swag Talk, Twitter, Swag Talk 76. Um, like, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hit, hit that uh, subscription button. Um, if you have subscribed, man, won't you let somebody else know um, to please subscribe? We're making our way to 800. Uh, we're taking that march to the eights. Um, hit that like button for sure, man. Make sure you like the videos. Um, feel free to share them and comment, you know, on your thoughts on any of these team seasons or any other uh, other news that's going on right now. Um, like I said, we are in that period. Uh, the portal is on and jumping. Uh, early, early signing day is December 21st. So a lot of you know, a lot of stuff to, to, to take place there. Um, also, you know, like I said, you know, Celebration Bowl coming up, you know, coaching searches, uh, a whole lot of stuff. So, you know, if you got a comment on any of that, man, hit the hit the uh, comment section um, and do that. And also, like I said, Thursday is Swag Smoke. Um, so if you want to share your feelings there, um, hit the line. You know, we'll have a number on, on the show. You can hit the line and, and let us know how you're feeling and what you're feeling about all the swag world. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it, man. We're going to start off with um, this news that dropped uh, on Friday about the A-Sun, Atlantic Sun, and, and WAC Conference. They had a um, – during the season, they had like a schedule co scheduling coalition or whatever you want to call it, and they were um, basically in, in terms – there were two conferences, but in terms of an auto bid for the FCS playoffs, they were one conference. So now that they've announced um, that they intended to merge and form a football-only conference to move up to the FBS level. So that's something that's pretty interesting to take into account because there's been talk of people wanting SWAC, the SWAC teams to move up as a conference. Um, if this goes through, this will be the first FBS conference that's been formed um, since the Mountain West in 1999. So there's been a long time um, before a, a fully formed new F FBS conference has happened. Um, the teams in this in this coalition right now are uh, Stephen F. Austin, Abilene Christian, Utah Tech, Southern Utah, and Tarleton State from the WAC. They'll join A-Sun members, Austin P, Eastern Kentucky, Central Arkansas, and North Alabama to form a newly merged conference. Uh, right now the conference obviously doesn't have a name yet. Um, the league plans to play together in 2024 with the nine members before adding another team, uh, Utah, Re U University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, and making and going FBS. So um, this move would probably take this move would take place within the next five to ten years. So it's you know it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. Um, right now, there's still a lot to happen. Um, they're going to have to go through a transition process of moving up. Um, right now, there is um, there's a, a, a moratorium about uh, conferences uh, moving up as a single sport conference. Uh, so they will have to get rid of that because they, you know, the, they want all, all schools to be, you know, FBS, D, you know, fully fledged D1 in all sports. So this will have to be a most likely this will have to be an all sport conference, and um, they're gonna have to go through a, a transition process and make sure that they meet all the uh, requirements for F FBS ball. But this is something that you know it is really, really 
worth keeping an eye on. Um, right now, there's still not a lot of you know concrete news or, or evidence about it. Um, but this is a huge first step. I mean, these are um, some teams you know who who are looking to jump as a whole from FCS, and that's something that if you're you know a per, you know person keeping tabs on FCS, that's a little concerning. Um, the, that lets you know that these the money is not where it needs to be, and, and people are doing whatever they need to do to get that bag. So um, expect to see you know maybe if this works, expect to see some more people maybe looking to doing it. So if you are one of those people who thinking about the swag moving up, um, this is definitely um, up your alley. So I just wanted to put that out there now. Um, we'll we'll continue to keep tabs on this as, as it develops. Um, right now, it's it's like I said, it's, it's really new right now. So um, I wouldn't really put too much stock in anything yet until we get some concrete um, concrete evidence about it and, and some more information. So um, let's make sure that we you know we keep we keep tabs on that um, as this situation moves forward. All right, so let's let's jump into a little bit of basketball like we've been doing for uh, most shows. Uh, we've been kind of going over uh, the, the 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 schedule for the week and and, and some of the results. Um, Swag basketball has been going pretty good, man. You know, I think um, when you look at you know the, the teams playing in the non conference, everybody's been you know picking up a win or two here or there. So you know, teams are you know there there's not very many teams that are on those long old for whatever streaks that <laughs> we tend to start off on. So. It's been a pretty good non-conference schedule, and um, we're going to continue to to see how we go as we move toward the, the, the Christmas holidays and, and swag play starting on January seventh. So, um, not that long away from swag play, only a couple of weeks, but um, teams are uh, starting to kind of slow down on, on non-conference play. But we'll look at um, we'll look at the scores from uh, Wednesday on, and then we'll look at this week's upcoming schedule. Uh, on the women's side, starting on Wednesday, December seventh, uh, San Francisco beat Palm Bluff ninety-four to sixty-six. Uh, Alabama State beat Samford, nice non-conference victory, sixty-six sixty-one. Uh, Thursday, Tulsa beat Prairie View sixty-six sixty-one. Uh, Friday, Southern beat Spring Hill eighty-four to fifty-four. Saturday, Tennessee Tech beat Alabama A&M seventy-eight sixty-eight. Uh, on today's schedule, Texas Southern is at Florida State. Bethune Cookman is at St. John's. Alabama State is at University of Texas. Southern is at Tulane. And Jackson State is at Missouri. Monday, December 12th, Tuskegee is at Florida AM. Uh, Tuesday, December 13th, Bethune Cookman is at Iona. Tougaloo is at Alcorn State. Prairie View is at Southeastern Louisiana. On Wednesday, Texas Southern is at Arizona, Texas. Place at Jackson State, so that's a nice, nice home game, man. So if you guys are in the Jackson area uh, on Wednesday, man, watch y'all go ahead and, and, and check that out. Um, go ahead and, and, and check that game out. Mississippi Valley is at uh, University of New Orleans, and Alabama State is at Jacksonville State. Uh, Thursday, December fifteenth, Grambling is at Ar Arkansas State. Florida and them is at Mississippi State. Friday, December sixteenth, Southern is at Wichita State. Alcorn at Colorado. Saturday, December 17th, Alabama State is at South Alabama, Jackson State at Washington State, Prairie View at Arizona State, Valley at UAB, and Sunday, Alabama A&M is at South Carolina State, uh, Bethune-Cookman is at Winthrop, Grambling at TCU, Southern at Oklahoma, FAMU at Cal. Uh, let's take a quick look at what uh, what the standings are right now. Uh, Alcorn is three and four, Prairie View three and five, Southern three and five, Jackson State two and four, FAMU one and six, Valley one and six, Alabama State one and six, Pine Bluff one and eight, Gremlin one and eight, uh, Bethune Cookman zero and six, Alabama A and M zero and seven, and Texas Southern is zero and seven. Uh, moving on to the men's side, uh, let's jump back uh, to the beginning of last week, uh, the middle of last week. Uh, Alabama State lost to North Alabama 71-63 on Wednesday. Friday, Gramlin picked up a nice victory on the road against uh, Vanderbilt. That's their second uh, major conference victory on the season. So Gramlin's basketball team has been playing really well in this non-conference schedule. 
Alabama and them also beat Lipstone 63 to 59. Uh, Saturday, Pine Bluff lost to Texas 88-43. North Florida beat Bethune Cookman 88-48. Uh, Southern beat Louisiana State Alexandra 98-76. Uh, Southern Illinois beat Alcorn 74 to 68. Today's games, uh, Sunday, December 11th, Jackson State is at Akron. Um, Prairie View is at Northwestern. North American is at Texas Southern. Monday, December 12th, South Alabama at Alabama A&M. Tuesday, December 13th, Edward Waters is at Florida. Uh, Florida A&M Southern is at Xavier in Cincinnati. Uh, Valley is at Wichita State. Prairie View is at Illinois Chicago. On Wednesday, December 14th, Jackson State is at Mississippi State. Pine Bluff is at Minnesota. On Friday, December 16th, Bethune-Cookman is at Incarnate Word. Southern is at Youngstown State. Valley is at Tulsa. On Saturday, December 17th, Jackson State is at Texas Tech. Alabama A&M is at Illinois. Prairie View is at Montana. Alabama State is at Georgia Tech. Uh, Ecclesia College is at Pine Bluff. Gramlin State is at Virginia Tech. Texas Southern is at uh, North Carolina a and uh, where they play North Carolina A&T in Las Vegas. Uh, that game is on ESPN Plus on Saturday, so y'all make sure y'all check that game out for sure, uh, December 17th. All right, December 18th, Texas Southern is playing Hampton in Vegas. Um, also, that's the ESPNU broadcast. Uh, Florida and them at Louisville. Bethune Cookman at UTSA. Uh, Southern is at UAB. Valley, I mean, yeah, Valley is at TCU. Alcorn is at Seattle. So that'll be uh, the next week of games. Uh, let's take a look at the men's uh, records right now. Um, Grambling right now is 6-3, and three, so they have a very, very good non-conference record right now, 6-3. and three. Purview 4-4, four and four, Bethune-Cookman 4-5, four and five, Southern 4-5, four and five, Alabama and them 3-5, Alcorn 3-7, Pound Bluff 3-8, uh, FAMU 1-6, Jackson State 1-6, Texas Southern 1-7, Alabama State one and eight and Valley one and nine. So this is to me, this is like the first time in quite some time that no men's team is uh, is winless uh, in non-conference. So you know everybody at least is gonna not come into the schedule into the regular season with that zero and twelve record or whatever, and, and and have to make a run at the <laughs> at basically make an undefeated run or close to it to finish with a, a, a nice double digit winning winning record. So. Um, nice, nice start. Nice, nice start to the season for uh, both sides. So, you know, like I said, I, I expect to see this continue, um, and it would definitely be a good look for the conference if they can continue to pull out these these non-conference wins and head into conference play um, on a high note. So now, man, let's let's start to take a look at some football, man. Let's let's look back at the 2022 season for. Um, Alabama and them will start with the Bulldogs. Um, they finished the season at four and seven. Um, I had them picked to finish at uh six and five. You know, that I had a I, I thought the offense would probably be you know maybe a little bit better. Um, I was still a little concerned with the defense, but you know, I thought that they would be able to weather the storm that they had in that tough non conference slate. Uh, they finished four and seven and then four and four in conference. Uh, they uh opened up their season, season losing to uh, UAB fifty nine to nothing. They lost to Troy thirty eight seventeen. Uh, they beat they lost to Austin P twenty eight to three. They lost to FAMU thirty eight twenty five. They beat Bethune Cookman thirty five twenty seven. They beat Gramlin thirty seven thirty one in double overtime. They beat Pine Bluff thirty four thirty one. They lost to Alabama State twenty four seventeen. They lost to Valley thirty to twenty. They lost to Jackson State 27-13, and they lost to, and they beat Texas Southern 24 to 20 to close out their season. So, like I said, this was a you know kind of an up and down slate for Alabama AM. Um uh, offensively. They finished the conference 10th in scoring offense at 20 and a half points per game. Uh they finished 10th in scoring defense, allowing 32.1 points per game. Uh total offense. They were third at 380 yards per game. They had 27 total touchdowns, and they averaged 5.3 yards per play. So offensively, they actually played a lot better than it seemed. You know, I think, you know, with the inconsistency and, 
you know, not necessarily having the, the name guys that they normally have um, made the offense look a little bit worse than what it was. There. But they actually finished with a pretty solid offense. Uh, defensively, they finished seventh in the league in total defense, allowing 382 yards per game, uh, 44 touchdowns and 5.7 yards per play. So pretty, you know, nice improvements on defense um, quietly. Uh, this team was a, a little bit better than what their record was. Uh, rush, uh, rushing offense, the Bulldogs were sixth in the league at 160 yards per game. They had 16 touchdowns on the ground and averaged 4.0 uh, 4. yards per carry. Uh, defensively, they were seventh in the league against the run, 156 yards per game, 18 touchdowns. Uh, they allowed 4.4 yards per carry. Passing offense, they were fourth. At 220 yards per game, they had 11 touchdowns and 15 interceptions. Uh, that interceptions were their downfall. Um, turning over the ball really hurt them a lot this season. Uh, they completed 57% of their passes. Uh, defensively, they were 11th against the pass at 225 yards per game. Uh, they allowed 26 touchdowns. They had nine interceptions. The, uh, they allowed... Um, they allowed 24 sacks on the season, which was sick, was which was fifth. Um, they registered 23 sacks as a defense, which was eighth. So they, you know, they they were about average in protecting the quarterback and getting to the quarterback. Uh, first downs per game, they were third at 20.7. Uh, opponents averaged 20.6 first downs per game, which was seventh in the league. Uh, third down conversions, they uh, were last in the league at 29%. So that was probably the one issue that they off – one of the two major issues that offense had was turnovers and poor third, third down performance, uh, 29% on third down. Defensively, the opponents uh, converted 42.7% on, on third down. So, again, that's 10th place, not good in that aspect. Uh, fourth down conversions, uh, they were uh, third in the league at 50%. Uh, they converted. They attempted 34, for, 34 fourth downs, which is the most in the league. So they uh, definitely um, attempted a lot of fourth downs that were successful half of the time. The opponents converted 55% on fourth downs, which was last in the league. So that definitely kind of hurts you um, getting off the field. And, that, and that's one of those reasons why their offense, uh, why their team struggled. Uh, looking at uh, their Russian leader, uh, Donovan Eaglin, came on strong this season. Um, transfer from Michigan State, he had 871 yards, averaged 5.1 yards per carry with six touchdowns. Uh, Xavier Langford had 283 yards on the ground, three and a half yards per carry, three touchdowns. Jemison, 225, 4.3 yards per carry, three touchdowns. The passing game, like I said, they they played basically played two quarterbacks uh, off and on. Uh, Langford, 111 of 199 with six touchdowns and seven interceptions, 1,275 yards. Quincy Casey, 88 of 150, uh, 1,063 yards, five touchdowns and eight interceptions. Uh, the leading receiver on the season was uh, Isaiah Cox with 33 catches for 425 yards and three touchdowns. Cameron Young, 29 catches, 330, 336 and three touchdowns. Uh, Keenan Hambrick. 29 catches, 370 yards, and two touchdowns. Terrell Gardner, 28 catches for 325 yards. Uh, Brian Jenkins, Jr., only played in four games this season. He had 18 catches for 140 yards. And Ibrahim only played in six games this season, and he caught 13 passes for 138 yards and no touchdowns. Uh, defensively, they were led in tackles by Dre Terry with 85. Moses Douglas had 61. Uh, Zarion Hayes had 54 tackles for loss. Hayes, 17. Terry, 13. Uh, Sacks. Hayes led the team with four. Uh, Thomas Douglas, Jabron McNeil, and Trey Middleton each had three sacks apiece. Uh, the leader interceptor was Avian Rice with two, and Moses Douglas also had two. So, like I said, when you look at this team, you know, they their, their numbers were a little bit better than their record. But they had such a rough early season start going 0-4. And, and I feel like they never really recovered. You know, like I said, the offense, you know, continued to turn the ball over. Uh, the defense showed flashes, which was something that I thought would, you know, would be a key impact on the season. But um, being unable to win a non-conference game, 
um, basically makes your 500 conference record look worse overall. So um, th this was kind of a tale of two different teams. You know, after the beginning of the season, they started playing a little bit better. Um, they put together some some nice wins, and they were competitive in, in some games. Um, they were, you know, right, you know, they they you know didn't necessarily get blown out by Jackson State, North Fam, you, but you know, both of those games were fairly close losses. Um, their loss to Alabama State was was a you know was a, a close loss. So that you know that in conference they they played really well, um, but they just never really put together uh, the consistency. And, you know, that led to some people maybe having questions for Coach Manor. Um, they closed out the season with a nice comeback victory against Texas Southern. So, you know, they at least closed out the season with some momentum. And we'll see what they do on the trail, uh, the recruiting trail and in the portal. Uh, and then we'll, you know, we'll visit the Bulldogs again um, in the spring. Uh, next, we talk about Alabama State under first-year coach Eddie Robinson. Um, this team, you know, Came in as you can see, I had them picked at seven and four. Um, they finished six and five on the season, finished third place at four and four. Um, they beat Alabama and them, so by virtue of that, they finished third place. So, pretty much, you know, around where I figured they would be. Um, the difference between my prediction and <laughs> their season is that loss to Palm Bluff at the end of the season. Um, that was certainly a surprise loss, um, and and that turn and that turn the tide on, on how their schedule, how their season looked. But this team defensively had one of the better defenses in the league. Offensively just never had any consistency. Uh, they opened up their season with a 23-13 victory over Howard in the MEAC Swag Challenge. Um, they beat Miles 21-13. They lost to Alabama, they lost to UCLA 45-7. They uh lost they beat they lost to Purview 24-15. They beat Texas Southern 16-13. They lost to Jackson State 26 to 12. They beat Valley 24 to 9. They beat Alabama and 24-17. They beat Bethune Cookman 37-22. They lost to Florida and 21-14. And they lost to Pine Bluff 19 to 14. So if you look at their conference losses, um all losses were close. They lost to Jackson State by 14. Um, that was their biggest margin um, of defeat. They lost to Prairie View by nine. They lost to FAMU by a touchdown, which basically they were already losing, but they had a chance to kick the winning field goal. Uh, FAMU blocked it and returned it for a, a touchdown. So um, that, you know, that kind of changed, you know, changed the complexion of that game. That was a seven-point loss. And they lost to Pine Bluff by five when they had the lead at the very end of the game. So they only lost one conference game by double figures. All of the rest were by nine or less. So, if they could have found a way to win those games, they could have had a much better record. But they had a lot of close conference conf uh, 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 other conference victories. They won uh, two by two by single digits, and uh, they beat uh, Purview. They beat Valley by you know not a not a huge margin, and uh, they beat Bethune Cookman by fifteen. So they had a couple of games on the on the winning side that could have went the other way as well. Um, and basically, almost. All of their games could have went either way. So, you know, this team could have finished with a much better record or a much, much worse record. So, you know, that nothing was cut and dry with them. Um, they kind of went the way you would expect. Uh, I think offensively, they just never really got got any footing. Um, they finished 11th in the league in scoring offense at 19.4 points per game. Defensively, they were second in the league in scoring defense at 20.2 points per game. Really good defense, man. Like I said, I feel like a lot of times they, you know, they wasted a, a great defensive effort. Um, total offense, they were 11th at 307 yards per game. They averaged 5.1 yards per play. They had 24 total touchdowns on the season. Uh, defensively, they were four, uh, fifth in the league in total defense at 325 yards per game, 26 touchdowns, 4.9 yards per play. Uh, rushing offense, they were – 11th at 111 yards per game. They averaged 3.1 yards per carry with 12 touchdowns. Uh, Russian defense, they were fifth in the league, allowing 133 yards per game, 15 touchdowns, 3.8 yards per carry. Uh, passing deep, passing offense, they were sixth in the league at 195 yards per game, 12 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, completing 60% of their passes. Uh, the opponents come uh, 192 yards per game, 
11 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, uh, 57% completion rate. The offense allowed uh, 30 sacks, which was eighth in the league. Defensively, they registered 24 sacks, which was sixth in the league. Uh, they averaged uh, they averaged 17.6 first downs per game, which was 10th. Uh, the opponents averaged uh, 18.7 first downs, which was fourth. Third down conversion rate, the Hornets were fifth in the league at 39%. Uh, the opponents were 38.1%, which was seventh in the league. Fourth down conversions. Alabama State was last at 16%. They only converted two of 12 on fourth down. Uh, the 12 was the, the lowest number of fourth down attempts this season, and the two obviously were the lowest uh, com conversions. Uh, the defense allowed 30% conversion rate, 6 of 20. Uh, that's second in the league. Uh, looking at some of the individual numbers for the Hornets, uh, they were led in rushing by – uh, Ja'Cory Merritt with 467 yards and four touchdowns. He averaged 3.9 yards per carry. Santo Dunn, 443 yards, uh, six yards per carry, one touchdown. Jawan Howell, 261 yards, three and a half yards per carry, four touchdowns. Demetrius Davis, 149 yards, 1.9 yards per carry, two touchdowns. Uh, Davis missed two games and parts of other games with injuries. Uh, he, you know, he definitely got banged up a bit this season. Um, he will ultimately lead the team in passing, 90, going 94, 158, uh, 1,204 yards, seven touchdowns, four interceptions. Miles Crawley, 58 of 96, 785 yards, four touchdowns, five interceptions. Uh, they were led in receptions by Jeremiah Hickson with 31 catches for 364 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, Keyshawn Johnson, 31 catches for 530 yards and three touchdowns. Isaiah Scott, 20 catches, 266 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Levante Chenault, uh, 14 catches for 210 yards and one touchdown. Ja'Cory Merritt, 13 for 167. Uh, Darius Edmonds, 12 for 236 and one touchdown. Uh, defensively, they were led in tackles by Bubba Adams with 128 tackles on the season. Uh, Urshaw Davis, 65. Brandon Gaddy, 57. Uh, tackle for loss, Adams, 12. Gaddy, 10 and a half. Ogletree, 8. Nelson Jordan with 7. Jordan led the team with 10 sacks, uh, Ogletree four and a half, their young roll two and a half, interceptions. Uh, uh, Kale Jackson had three, Adrian Maddox had two, Keenan Isaac had two. Like I said, this defense was very good. They had a very, very solid defense this season offensively. They were hit or miss. And I think that, you know, that was that, you know, I don't want to say they downfall because they finished with a winning record um, and a 500 record in conference, but. Um, that lack of offense definitely hurt them in that Pine Bluff game. Um, you know, maybe that was just an issue of focus, you know, last game against a team that was, you know, down and out and you just didn't take them, uh, didn't take them seriously. Uh, you know, that can, you know, that can kind of hurt you. So, um, I don't know if that was the case, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look at it that way. Um, I, next, we look at the Braves, or Alcorn, and as you can see, I had Alcorn finishing 7-4, and four, and I had them winning the, the, the West Division. I, I thought Alcorn was the team to beat, and for a portion of the season, they seemed that way. Uh, they had a middle portion of the season where they lost three games in a row, and that really almost effectively took them out of the race, and of course, they ended that season with a loss to Jackson State in conference um, at the end, so that gave them that 4-4 four and four, uh they gave them that four and four record on the season and a five and six finish. So now, to, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. So not, you know, not a great season for Alcorn, not bad. You know, the record could have been better. You know, like I said, those three losses in a row really hurt them. Uh, they opened up that season um, with a game that they really should have won against Stephen F. Austin. They, they led that game for the bulk of the game. And they ended up losing 31-27. Special teams was a downfall. Um, if you you know you pay attention to all corn football this season, that was one of their biggest issues was uh, special teams play. Uh, the next game they uh, they lost to Tulane 52 to nothing. 
Uh, then they would go on and beat Magnese 30 to 19 in a game where the defense registered 10 stacks. This defense was amazing at getting pressure on the quarterback. They were one of the better teams um, in, in sacking the quarterback this season. And their defense really, you know, kind of turned the tide for this team. Uh, they kept them in a lot of games, um, but they, you know, ultimately there are injuries and just inconsistency on offense and special teams would be their downfall. Um, they would beat Pine Bluff 38 to 21. And then they would um then they would go on and beat Valley 30 to 7. They would lose to Southern by a score of 21 to 17. Then they would lose to Texas Southern um 34-27. Then they would lose to Gramlin by a score of 35 to 6. That game was definitely uh, Gramlin had so many short fields and, and really just took advantage of a lot of all corner mistakes. Uh, they would ultimately go on to beat Prairie View by a score of 23 to 16. And then they would beat um, Bethune Cookman by a score of 17 14. And then they would lose to Jackson State to close out the season by a score of 24 to 13. So, this, you know, like I said, that middle portion of the season, man, if you want to point to any point of the, uh, of the season that really hurt them, it was that middle portion going 0-3 um, in the middle of October. <coughs> Excuse me, really hurt this team and put them from basically being in the in the lead or tied for the lead to being basically out of the race and needing a lot of help and, you know, just couldn't really get it. And when you close out your season with Jackson State, that makes, you know, that makes it really tough to, um, to, to make some things happen. Uh, looking back statistically at the Braves, uh, this season, uh, they scored 20.7 points per game, which was ninth in the league. Uh, defensively, they were fifth in the league in scoring defense at 24.9 points per game. Uh, total offense, they ended up being eighth in the league at 342 yards per game. They had 25 total touchdowns and five uh, yards per play. Defensively, they were fourth at 325 yards per game, uh, 32 touchdowns, five yards per play. <laughs> Uh, rushing offense, the Braves did a really good job with their run game this season, 175 yards per game, 16 touchdowns, 4.1 yards per carry. Uh, defensively, they were fourth in the league at 131 yards allowed, 18 touchdowns, allowed 3.4 yards per carry. Uh, their passing game was eighth in the league at 167 yards per game. They threw for nine touchdowns and 10 interceptions. So the passing attack never really got, you know, got up to snuff. Uh, like I said, they you know they they went through some inconsistencies and then injuries at that position, really kind of held them back. Well, uh, passing defense, 193 yards per game, 14 touchdowns allowed, and eight interceptions. Uh, they comp opponents completed 58 percent of their passes. Uh, the Braves completed 55 percent of their passes. And so the offensive line play still wasn't as great as it probably should have been. But defensively, they registered 39 sacks, which was third in the league. Um, in, in other seasons, that probably would have led the league. But this team, you know, there were two other teams that did a great job with pressuring quarterbacks this season. But a 10-sack effort for the Braves really was a key factor for their defense. And they, they got it done with a lot of guys. They didn't have that one guy with, you know, multiple sacks. They just had a – they did it by numbers, and they were really tough to block as, as a whole. Uh, first downs, the Braves were eighth with 18.4 first downs per game. Uh, the opponents averaged uh, 17 and a half first downs per game, which was second in the league. Third down conversions, Alcorn was seventh at uh, 35%. The opponents were 36%, which was fifth place. <laughs> uh, fourth down conversions, Alcorn was 9 of 18 for 50%. That tied them for third place. And the opponents converted uh, 44%, 8 of 18. That was 10th place. Looking uh, individually at, at some of the uh, performances for the Braves, Jarvion Howard was the league's leading rusher with 1,275 yards. Uh, he averaged 5.1 yards per carry and 12 touchdowns. Amazing season for him. Uh, he really was the offense in a lot of games. Um, tough guy to bring down, you know, a guy that definitely you can get the ball too late in the game and he'll get you the yard as you need. Uh, Nico Duffy, 335 yards and one touchdown, average 4.3 yards per carry. Uh, Javante Leatherwood, 312 yards, 
averaged five yards per carry and two touchdowns. Uh, Aaron Allen, he's uh, he started eight games before he went down with injury. Uh, he was uh, 121 of 194, had eight touchdowns and seven interceptions, uh, completed 62% of his passes, 1,424 yards. Uh, Trey Lawrence came on in reserve. He was 27 of 73 for 37% completion rate, 325 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Uh, Juan Anthony led the team with 30 catches for 366 yards and two touchdowns. Malik Rogers, 27 for 380 and two touchdowns. Montario Hunt, 23 for 489 and three touchdowns. C.J. Bolar, 21 catches for 248 yards on the season. The Braves were led in tackles by Terrence Ellis with 92, Clyden Cherilis with 73, Kieran Kinsler with 61. Uh, Cherilis led the defense with 14 and a half tackles for loss. Uh, Bailey, 11 and a half. Ellis, nine and a half sacks. Uh, Bailey led the team with nine and a half sacks. Uh, Cherilis with six. Ellis and Rice each had four, four sacks apiece. And uh, McCollum had two interceptions to lead the defense. Again, pretty solid defensive effort for uh, for all corn. Um, offensively, you know, like I said, they battled a lot of inconsistency this season. Um, but they had a spectacular running attack, which definitely kept them in a lot of games and uh, made them a, a tough team to beat. You know, I mean, you had to really shut down that run game to give give the Braves a, a, a solid loss. So, you know, like I said, I picked them 7-4 to finish 5-6. Uh, I picked them in the division. They finished, you know, in, in the middle portion of the, the, uh, the of the division. So it's kind of off. Not a huge drop off, but the fact that I had them picked them in the division it, it is a big, you know, a big a big loss on my prediction. So, um, you know, a, a season that maybe wasn't the best. So you know, you want to kind of move on and, and 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 find your way back to the top. Uh, our final team that we're going to cover today. Is uh, Bethune Cookman? Uh, I had them picked at five and six um, because I thought that they could, you know, I thought they would kind of find their way back on top. Um, they had a lot of games I thought that were toss up type games, and I kind of, you know, hedged those bets toward them, but they ultimately ended up finishing two and nine overall and two and six in conference. Um, basically, a similar record to last season, if not the same. But, you know, they didn't have that long losing streak to open the season like they did last season. Uh, they did lose to Miami 70-13 to to open up their season. They lost to South Carolina State 33-9. to They beat Grambling 36-19. So they only lost two games to start the season before they picked up their first win um, instead of going 0-8 last season before they won uh, a game. They lost to Alabama in them 35-27. They lost to Tennessee State 41 to 17 um, in a game where they had a horrible second quarter um, on both sides of the ball, which let the Tigers blow that game out of the, out of the water. Uh, they lost to Jackson State 48 to 8. They beat Valley 45 35. They lost to Prairie View 58 48 in a game that they led at the half. Uh, Alabama State beat them 37 22. They lost to Alcorn 17 14. And they lost to Florida and them 41 to 21. So, they had a couple close losses. Um, they did have some some blowout losses, but they did have a couple close losses. Um, this offense was a lot better um, than than you know you would think. Um, defensively, they weren't good. Offensively, they, they were surprisingly good. Uh, they ended up scoring uh, twenty three and a half points per game, uh, which was um, excuse me seventh in the league. Um, the uh, defense allowed 39 and a half points per game, which was last in the league. Uh, total offense, they ended up fifth in the league at 365 yards per game. They had 30 total touchdowns, averaged 5.6 yards per play. Uh, defensively, they were 10th in the league, allowing 411 yards per game. They allowed 50 touchdowns, which was the second most um, as a defense. And they allowed 6.5 yards per play, which was the second most allowed uh, in the league. Uh, rushing offense, they finished um, eighth at 144 yards per game. Uh, six touchdowns, oh, excuse me, 16 touchdowns on the ground, averaged four and a half yards per carry. Uh, defensively, they were 10th, allowing 207 yards per game on the ground. 
29 touchdowns, which is the uh, second most touchdowns allowed by defense this season, and 4.9 yards per carry, which was also the second highest uh, yard per carry mark this season. Uh, passing offense, they were third at 221 yards per game. They had 14 touchdowns and 13 interceptions, completing 56% of their passes. Uh, defensively, they were ninth, allowing 204 yards per game, uh, 21 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Uh, they allowed a completion rate of 63.6%, which was second most in the league. Um, again, they you know they they struggled in a lot of aspects defensively. Uh, the offense allowed 42 sacks on the season, which was the most in the league. Um, they struggled, especially early in the season. Um, they juggled quarterbacks early in the season. And then you have a quarterback that runs a lot and moves around a lot. He's going to take some sacks. Uh, defensively, they were 11th in the league. They they registered 20 sacks on the season. Um, first downs converted. Uh, they averaged 18.6 first downs per game, which put them at sixth place. Uh, the opponents had 22 first downs per game, 22.8, which was last in the league. Uh, third down conversions, the Wildcats were fourth at 39%. Uh, defensively, the opponents converted 46% of their third downs, which was last in the league. So, as you can see, defensively, they had a lot of issues this year um, stopping anybody in any in any way. Uh, th- fourth down conversions, they were fifth at 47.4%. Uh, the opponents converted 52% on fourth downs, which was 11th. So, again, they couldn't stop you on third down. They couldn't stop you on fourth down. Um, they couldn't stop you running. They couldn't stop you passing. So they, you know, defensively, they just had a lot of problems. And they were the opposite of Alabama State. Alabama State, I feel like, wasted a good defense. I feel like this team wasted a good offense. And now some of that was because they were trailing in games, but they also had some games where they were going toe-to-toe with people uh, offensively, but they just couldn't really finish the deal because defensively they just couldn't get those stops. Uh, Individually, uh, the Wildcats were led in rushing this season by Quayshawn Bird with 647 yards, uh, six yards per carry, and six touchdowns. Uh, Jalen Jones, 574 yards, 4.4 yards per carry, and five touchdowns. Uh, Jones was the leading passer, uh, 188 of 321, 59% completion rate, 2,275 yards, 14 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. <laughs> Uh, receiving Kamari Everett, 39 catches for 445 yards and seven touchdowns. Marcus Riley, 39 catches, 563 yards and five touchdowns. Uh, Bird, 17 for 123 and a touchdown. Dylan Lee, 17 for 207. Uh, Daryl Paul, 13 for 210. Defensively, they were led in tackles by uh, Lewis, uh, Rosendo Lewis with 60. Was, uh, he had 61, but uh, Uriah Ratliff lead, led the team with 63 tackles. Uh, Efert had 53 uh, tackles for loss. Uh, Judas McKenzie, eight and a half. Devontae, Devontae Hampton, seven and a half. Jaden Loving with seven. Uh, Loving led the team with four and a half sacks. Uh, Walls, three. Hampton, two. Interceptions, Amari Hill Robinson led the team with four interceptions. Uh, that's definitely an all, all conference guy, and he put up those kind of numbers this season. Uh, one of the bright spots on their defense. So, um, but Thune Cookman, like I said, they were a team that probably should have been a lot better than what they were. Um, when you look at the offense, but then when you look at the defense, they may they may have needed should have been worse. Um, so they kind of you know met in the middle and finished with a two and nine record. So. Um, that's going to do it for today's show. We'll be back on Wednesday with our Celebration Bowl preview, and we'll recap our uh, Florida and them, Grambling, Jackson, and Valley seasons. Um, like I said, uh, Sunday we'll recap the Celebration Bowl and any any other thing that come with that game. Um, and then we'll recap Prairie View Southern, Texas Southern, and Pine Bluff seasons, and that'll do it for our season recaps. Uh, and that'll do it for the 2022 season. Um, and then from then on, we'll talk recruiting and transfer portal and basketball and uh, coaching searches and all of that stuff um, from this point, uh, from that point on. Also, Thursday, Swag Smoke, live 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. If we, uh, we're taking calls. That's, that's our thing now. So make sure you get on, get on with us and chop it up. 
And that's going to do it for us, man. I'm out of here. Y'all enjoy y'all the rest of y'all weekend, and we'll catch y'all on the rebound. Peace.